Yeah, we got Stanton's uh, 701 engine running today, and uh, we're going to be running it for a while and do uh, some checks on it, and then uh, freight her up and get her off to him. He's anxiously waiting to uh, to get it to put it in his uh, Zenith 701. John, what is it that we have here? This is a 2009 Honda Fit automobile converted engine. The Honda Fit is a little bit smaller than the Civic that most people are familiar with, but it is a popular car now because of the fuel efficiency. So we picked that engine for um, uh, lightness and fuel efficiency, and also Honda Motorsport decided to pick that particular engine for uh, Formula Ford racing. Um, so it's a, it's a well-tested and well-proven engine even though it is a 2009 design. The uh, output is 117 horsepower in the car and uh, 110 in the airplane at a slightly reduced RPM. The performance figures are very similar to that of the Rotax 912 as you look down the chart. Um, the engine is a little bit heavier um, but it's also uh, bigger in displacement and has 10 more horsepower. Now, are you rebuilding these engines then, or are they coming in from uh, recycling yards? Or how are you getting a hold of them? And is there anything that you have to do to them in order to change them over to the aircraft application? Well, the interesting part, uh, up through the years, you know, my company, we've been doing the Subaru conversion, and we only uh, provided firewall forward kits, or finished. Uh, with this Honda engine, <clears throat> we're going to have a slightly different uh, profile, business profile. Whereas uh, people that uh, would like to do more on them by themselves can. Uh, we would provide a, a modification kit that would be available on a shopping cart on the internet. People can order the intake manifold, the gearbox, the, the dual ECU computer that operates the engine, the exhaust, and so forth and so on. All these pieces and buy their own Honda engine either in salvage or new and put it together for, uh, for uh, $7,000. And then uh, the next level up would be, if you want to buy a finished engine, you can do so for around $13,000. Um, and also then Firewall Forward will be available for slightly more money, and that's for uh, particular airplanes that there are a certain quantity available of, like such as the 601 and 7, 750, the S19, uh, uh, airplanes like that. Now how many of these units are actually flying now? Well, the Subaru is what we have specialized uh, for 18 years doing. The Honda is a brand new project for us. We wanted to find a light sport engine or an automobile engine that we could convert for light sport. And there's not many of those available because weight is always a very, very critical and, uh, and, and an issue in a light sport airplane. This Honda Fit engine 2009, however, Honda uh, made a great effort to make the engine lighter in the car, which makes it a good candidate for us to convert to an, for, as an airplane engine. And what about the oil? Is it a dry sump or is it uh, using a tank? Are you, uh... Uh, what we did is uh, we wanted to keep the engine as simple as possible. Uh, that ruled out a dry sump system with external oil tanks and hoses and uh, check Maybe valves and such and such. So what we did is we, we tilted the engine on its side about 80 degrees. Uh, what that allowed us to do was to keep the original oil uh, uh, pump in its original location. However, we modified the oil tank with uh, an 80 degree bend in it and uh, created an oil sump on our own, uh, which uses the original pump and the original oiling system of the engine, including the oil return from the cylinder head back to the oil sump uh, on this side of the engine, which is completely standard and also the way that it is done in the car. And how are we dealing with uh, the fuel? Uh, is it injected or is it carbureted? Right, right. It's, it's, it's fuel injected like the 09 car. There's no change to the actual fuel injectors themselves. Uh, the, the ignition is a coil on plug ignition with uh, an individual coil for each spark plug. The redundancy uh, comes in the ECU, the electronic control unit. The uh, unit is not the one provided by Honda. Uh, it's uh, a unit that it, our company has uh, sourced out and manufactured, and it's completely dual with two complete separate 
uh, ECUs, electronic control units, in one case. And using individual inputs and, and um, outputs to run the engine. So it's kind of like having an up-to-date magneto system in the car where you have a switch on the panel for control unit one and control unit two. And you can test that before takeoff. And then there is dual fuel pumps as well as dual uh, battery sources in the airplane to make the engine reliable or as reliable as it could be if you had it in a car. What about cooling for the engine? It's water cooled. Uh, or liquid cooled using NPG coolant. Uh, very, very important for an auto conversion engine that the cooling system becomes compact due to the fact that the coolant is a uh, weight source in itself at eight pounds per gallon. The, uh, the cooling passages in the engine were redesigned by Honda last year and it's already very compact. The amount of hoses uh, and tubing external to this engine to cool it as it goes over to the radiator on this side behind these brochures um, do uh, are important in the design and we make it as compact as possible uh, very very short run out and very short run in with a small uh, tank for the excess cooling and for expansion and uh, how are you dealing with the prop loads on the crankshafts well Due to the geared reduction drive, there are no loads being transferred to the crankshaft other than rotational since the uh, gearbox housing itself has the bearings to support that. Then the, the housing, uh, the load of the housing is distributed to the original bell housing points on the engine, um, which, are very, which are structural mounting points, and the housing then contains the load from the propeller the centrifugal as well as the uh, uh, any kind of uh, shock load on the propeller in this forward housing. The unit uses its own oil supply with a um, sight gauge for the oil underneath here. It also has a temperature probe for the pilot to monitor the, the continuous temperature of the gearbox which gives a good and reliable indication of the safe operation of the gearbox as, as time goes by and uh, experience is built by the pilot flying the engine. Now, do we have a TBO or a recommended TBO on the engine now? It's, it's, it's too early to say anything like that. This is very... Uh, we, we have flown this engine. Uh, we don't have any real time on it. Uh, we have lots of time as far as our experience doing the Subaru conversions. But, it's, but this Honda engine, this little light sport Honda converted, we, uh, we have less than 10 hours of actual flight time, and that's where we're at now in the program. Uh, after the show, continue with flight testing and, and uh, uh, upgrades, and then standardize for production to be able to make the uh, kits as well as the completed engines for sale. Now, how are we dealing with the generating system on that? Uh, using uh, uh, the same alternator that is very popular for a lot of engines in, in light sport. It's a 40 amp uh, nip and denso alternator and it's uh, driven by a serpentine belt uh, like the other accessories on the back of the engine. It's all done the same way that it is in the car with the uh, five groove serpentine belt that rides on the crankshaft and the accessories. Now, how are you mounting the engine? Is there uh, uh, some sort of plate or is it a, a flat mount? How is it? Uh, uh, this is something that we wanted. We wanted to have an engine that was mountable uh, in a firewall forward configuration, but also by an individual that is either designing his or her own airplane, uh, wants to do the engine mount themselves, or just, just wants to buy the engine. So what we did is we, we have a, a sub mount on the engine that gives the builder the uh, three locations, one in the front uh, and two in the back, where that incorporates the um, the machine, the pads, where the rubber dampers can be installed and then an engine mount made for any airplane to the firewall from that sub-mount of the engine. And that was designed with the engine laying at this particular tilt with then the mount being straight so that it's easy to to do the drawing and the installation of the engine in any airframe. Now is there any, uh, any special type of exhaust that's going to be required for it or well, a standard exhaust? The nice thing about the Honda Fit engine uh, 2009 model and, and newer is that the exhaust 4 into 1 is done internal to the casting of the exhaust of the cylinder head. 
because of that, any exhaust is very, very inexpensive and simple uh, to fabricate. Uh, we do have uh, a straight pipe on this on this particular engine for the prototype, um, and it's not very very loud. However, installing instead of this pipe uh, a muffler such as a well, any kind of uh, bullet-shaped muffler, or even a, <clears throat> a larger muffler in, underneath here, is easy due to the fact that you don't have to run four individual pipes from an engine that's laid out like like most air-cooled engines are. Uh, Six-cylinder air-cooled engines would have six pipes coming together, and a four-cylinder would have four different pipes coming together in order to, to collect the exhaust gases before they can be muffled. With this engine, uh, everything is collected right at the engine, and the muffler and the exhaust system becomes very simple and lightweight. What type of are we looking at all of the to do put a prop on? Well, as a as a an engine, a crate engine, being converted to an quote unquote aircraft engine, uh, it would come in a box and if you took it out of the box as an aircraft engine conversion, it would be 198 to 205 pounds. A firewall forward weight would depend on the actual airplane. In the automobile, in the fit, it produces 117 horsepower. That's at an RPM that's higher than what we'd like to see in the airplane, uh, so we reduce that to 110 horsepower for takeoff. And what type of reduction ratio are we going then from the engine into the propeller? Uh, 2.33 to 1. Okay. So if you were cruising or long in the, uh, at cruise, what uh, RPM would you be using for cruise? Uh, 2,100 or 2,100 on the propeller. And that would be equal to what on the engine? Uh, well, 2.33 2 times that, so, yeah. So if somebody wanted to get more information, what's the easiest way to get a hold of you? Well, there is a, a website, uh, eggenfellneraircraft.com, and uh, there's a phone, 386-566-2616.